The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War historian, who from the Gallipoli landing on the 25th of April 1915 until war's end would remain at the front with our troops. In the depths of the bloody fighting of Pozieres in 1916, he conceived building the finest museum and memorial to the Australian infantry forces. Articulating finally the vision for the memorial in 1948, here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. In 1993, on Remembrance Day, the 11th of November, after decades of deliberation, anguish and debate, Australia's political, military and commemorative leadership made the decision that we would repatriate an Australian unknown soldier and place that soldier in the Hall of Memory at the Australian War Memorial, where previously we had recognised the unknown soldier as the Commonwealth soldier in Westminster Abbey. As is always the case, and you would expect, the elected leader of Australia, who at the time was Mr Paul Keating, was invited to and delivered a eulogy to the unknown Australian soldier. It was a towering speech, a legacy given to our nation, perhaps unexpected by many, but a speech that recognised the sacrifice of this soldier, his link to the other 62,000 who gave their lives, the shattered lives and communities of the length and breadth of Australia from the cataclysmic events of the First World War, and importantly linking that soldier, his sacrifice and that of others, to who we are today. This year, of course, will mark the 20th anniversary of the delivery of that eulogy on the occasion of the reinterment of the unknown Australian soldier on Remembrance Day in 1993. The eulogy has hung, just simply framed, outside our Hall of Memory for well over a decade. It hangs, as I said, at Villas Bretina, the Australian Memorial, and in other memorials throughout Europe. The Council of the Australian War Memorial for the last six months or so has been considering ways in which we could give greater permanence and, dare I say, respect to the eulogy given to Australia by our then Prime Minister. The end result of that is that where it has been hanging, framed, just outside the Hall of Memory, as you walk into the Hall, it will now be struck in bronze, the eulogy itself. So visitors to the Australian War Memorial, those going to the Hall of Memory, wishing to pay respects, to the unknown Australian soldier, will be reminded of why he is there and how he represents all of us and the aspirations we have, perhaps for ourselves, but more importantly, our country. The Australian War Memorial Council had considered placing two of the key phrases from Mr Keating's speech onto the surround, the beveled marbled edge around the surround of the unknown Australian soldier. Following a, a number of representations from legitimately concerned members of our community, the words known unto God, which were not placed on the surround around the unknown soldier until six years after his reinterment in 1999, those words known unto God, the evocative words of Rudyard Kipling, which graced the headstones of the Commonwealth soldiers right throughout Europe and other places in the world. Known unto God will remain where it is. At the front of the tomb, as you walk toward it, our stonemason and our calligrapher have very carefully removed the stonework that has been there. And the words that were inscribed on it said, this uh, Australian soldier represents all those who have died in war. What we are doing is replacing those words with the key phrase from the eulogy to the unknown Australian soldier. And the phrase is, he is all of them and he is one of us. So what that means is that Mr Keating in his eulogy has given us a form of words that says he represents all of them. All of those 62,000 men and some women from the First World War, but all of those 102,700 Australian men and women who have their name on the Roll of Honour at the War Memorial, he represents all of them. 
But what Mr Keating also gave us is the words, he is one of us. In other words, to remind us that this is not some distant stranger. This is a man who gave his life for us. He is one of us. He was a civilian soldier, as almost all of those on our roll of honour are and were. This is a very powerful eulogy that was given to our nation. It will not only stand the test of time, it already has. It's important that you understand what we are doing and why we are doing it. And I was recently reminded by one of the then senior staff at the Australian War Memorial, who was present on the day this eulogy was delivered, on the occasion of the reinterment of the unknown Australian soldier, when at its end, Mr John Howard turned to him and said, this is not a time for words, but our Prime Minister did us proud today. Mr Keating has been invited by the Council of the Australian War Memorial on Remembrance Day this year, 2013, to deliver the commemorative address. That is because it is the 20th anniversary of the delivery of that eulogy. We will also then have a small ceremony immediately following the national service where we will unveil the bronze panel, replacing, as I said, the framed speech given by Mr Keating 20 years ago and that magnificent eulogy, and we will also unveil the inscription, he is all of them and he is one of us, on the beveled edge at the front of the tomb of the unknown Australian soldier, and of course at the other end is and will remain known unto God.